Hello and welcome to module two switching concepts. This should be a short video. Again, don't forget to take your notes and upload them as homework. All right, let's get started. We're going to talk about frame forwarding first. So here's what I want you to write. I'm going to take you step by step on how the switch operates. Okay, so we're going to assume that PC1 is located at uh, port one and he has a MAC address E and PC that has the MAC address AC is located at port five and PC one wants to send data to PC two. Okay. So just remember port one and port AC and we'll talk about how the MAC address. This is, this is what this is was populated. All right. So step number one, remember MAC address one wants to send data to PC two. PC1 is going to encapsulate, want you to write everything that I'm saying, and you can pause and write, okay? You don't have to write everything that's in here. So PC1 encapsulates a packet into a frame. Remember, he's going to have the source MAC address EE and the destination MAC address AC on the frame. Number two, PC1 is going to send the frame after that, after it's been done, he's going to send the frame to port one. Now the switch is going to learn the MAC address EE is located on E is located on port one because of the ingress frame, the incoming frame into FA01 has the MAC address double E attached on it. It places the MAC address double E with fast ethernet 01 in the MAC address table. Sometimes, by the way, we call this CAM, C-A-M, which stands for Content Address Memory. So sometimes it's uh, we write this as CAM or MAC address table. All right, number four, after we place the double E at port one, number four, the switch is going to inspect the destination MAC address of this incoming frame. And he's going to say, that it has the double E. And then it's going to look it up, the MAC address. It's going to look up the double E. In, I'm sorry. It's going to look up the MAC address, which has uh, the destination MAC address that has AC in the MAC address table. Before all of these, AC is not going to be there. So in step number five, if the destination MAC address is not in the MAC address table, then the switch is going to flood the frame. To everyone, but if he's located, if he's on the list, he's going to switch it to that port. But since the first time, it's not he's not going to be in this switch. So what you're going to do is you're going to flood the frame to all the ports. All right. Just remember step number six: if the destination MAC address is in the MAC address table, then the switch will switch or send the frame to that port. If not, you're going to flood it. All right, and the last step is on P once PC2 responds back to port 5, the switch is going to learn that uh, MAC address AB, uh, AC is located at port 5. And that's how the switch populates the MAC address table, by learning the incoming or the ingress uh, frames that are coming in by looking at their source MAC IP address. All right. Uh, so a couple of things you need to know, by the way, the switch will never send frames back to the source. So once the frame comes in through the source, it's going to send it to somebody else, either to everybody or to multiple people with a multi back address or broadcast to everyone or a unicast just to one person, but it will never send it back to, to the source. And the other thing that you need to know, the MAC address table convergence means that the switch has learned all the MAC addresses and their associated ports. All right, so we talked about all the steps. Now let's get into the forwarding methods. There are two forwarding methods, really. There is the store and forward. Write these down. Store and forward stores the incoming frame to check it for errors. It uses the frame check sequence that's on the frame make sure to check the integrity of the frame to make sure it's good but that creates latency delay because you have to take the frame and store it before you actually check for the errors 
And there's the cut through switching. The cut through switching is we forward the frame as quickly as possible to the destination. There's no error checking. That's really uh, the type of cut through that does that is called fast, uh, fast forward. But there is the fragment free. Remember the fragment, a fragment is any frame that is less than 64 bytes. So a fragment free switch, write this down, a fragment free switch will check the size of the frame. And any frame that is less than 64 bytes, it's going to assume that it's a fragment and it will not send it to the destination. We'll drop it. All right. So that's that. Now let's look at the what's a collision domain and what is a broadcast domain in UCP. A collision domain occurs only in half duplex modes. That's because the NIC is sending or receiving on the same segment, sending data and receiving, even though the switch by itself has its own collision domain. So with full duplex, you don't have that. Full duplex el eliminates collision domains completely between switches. So you want to have full duplex and a full duplex and no collision. You'll be able to send. No one else is going to be sending back and there will be no collision with full duplex. So that's wonderful. All right. Just to know, hubs creates one big fat collision domain. If this is a hub, when you send one frame to the hub, the hub will send the data to everybody. He does, the hub does not have any software to read MAC addresses or anything like that. That's why it's a layer one device. So the hub is a one collision domain. And if you are sending a frame to a hub, no one that's connected to the hub will be able to communicate or receive data. So it's one billion, because otherwise you'll collide if you send it, because the other guy is sending it, because the hub will send the data to everyone. On the other hand, a switch is called the ports, it was micro segmentation of the hub. Micro segmentation means each port on the switch has its own collision domain, right? So each port on the switch is, has its own collision domain, but the whole switch is one broadcast domain. So a broadcast domain means that when you send a frame where that has a, broad, a broadcast frame, remember the destination MAC address has all ones, 48 ones, the switch will grab it and flood all the ports. So that's flooding, right? It was that's everybody that's attached to the switch will receive a broadcast frame. So that means this is one local area network. So here's something to remember. A broadcast domain is equal to LAN, local area network, because that's what a switch does. Um, a switch is one broadcast domain, but it has multiple Collision domain, could each port is a collision domain. And if you have full duplex on each port, then you have all, no collisions whatsoever. Just one big, huge broadcast domain. No collisions whatsoever because you are transmitting and receiving on different segments. All right? This is all one big broadcast domain because if, if this PC sends a broadcast frame to the switch, everybody gets it. This guy gets it too, and this guy will get the frame too, right? The only um, device that blocks broadcast frames from going outside is a router. So a router is the device that blocks or limits broadcasts to one LAN, right? So the default gateway, when you send the broadcast message, so assuming that this is a router, right? When you send a broadcast frame, this router default gateway will not allow the frame to go to the other side. So that's why we need routers. Router separates broadcast domain. Remember? Separates um, lands. All right. And that's it. Believe it or not. So write everything that I told you to write and upload them as homework. And I'll see you on the next chapter.